All across the globe, people are learning to make jewellery from their homes, creating their own small and beautiful businesses with a simple toolkit and a passion for making sparkly things. I've invited three jewellers to my home for three days of learning, making, creating and some serious relaxation. We're back with a second series, bigger and better than ever before. This is the Jewellers Retreat. Over the next few days, three training jewellers will make three projects. From pendants and earrings to engagement rings and storytelling jewellery, they will cover it all. With only a limited time to complete each project, the pressure will be on, but we'll be cheering them on every step of the way, and we'll get to see just how some of this amazing jewellery is made. Meet Kate Seow a Yorkshire-based handmade jeweller who is mum to a seven-year-old boy and a self-confessed gemstone addict. Tressa, a Hertfordshire-based surgeon, stepmom to two lovely stepsons and founder of her own jewellery business, Russian Blue Jewellery. And Kath Dare, a mum to four and South London-based full-time jeweller with a thriving weekly market store where she has sold hundreds of pieces of her work. These jewellers have all completed the one-year diploma in Advanced Jewellery with Jewellers Academy and have come such a long way with their training. I can't wait to see how they get on with their projects and put some of their newfound skills into action. And they will not be alone, guided by three talented mentors. Anelia Caprina, award-winning fine jeweller who has worked in the Hatton Garden jewellery trade workshops for many years. April Dace. Norfolk-based goldsmith and experienced designer maker, and Barbara Yard, London-based goldsmith jeweller and jewellery tutor. Alongside our two business mentors, myself, Jessica Rose, I'm the founder of Jewellers Academy, and Anna Campbell, our community manager, jeweller and teacher. Expect jewellery making, tool porn, techniques, business tips, gemstones and most of all tons of fun and creativity with this talented group of budding jewellers. If you are ready, let's get started. Welcome to day three of the Jewellers Retreat, the final day. We welcome back our jewellers into the studio. Welcome jewellers. Hello. Today they'll be making a piece that showcases their signature style as a jeweller. They have just five hours to complete the project and as they are advanced students making intricate work, we have allowed them to pre-make some elements to see if we can fit it all in that time. So those five hours start now, so without further ado, let's get making. How's it going? Yeah, okay actually. Yeah. Um, How are you feeling today? Yeah, better because I've, I've managed to pre-make the, um, the settings for this so hoping that I'll actually get something finished this time. Yes, yes, fingers crossed. And I think, you know, we were talking about this, weren't we? And mm -hmm. actually making a setting for a stone is mm -hmm. often a day's work yep. and setting the stone is often another day's work <laughs> at least. Absolutely, yes. So um, absolutely, it'd be lovely to see some of your beautiful stones set. But you did an amazing job you know, before as well. It's very easy to beat ourselves up. Yes. <laughs> so today is Signature Style Day. Um, tell us a bit about your piece and your style and why you chose this piece for your, your Signature Style Day. Okay, so I'm making a pendant and um, my signature style, I love to use a lot of gemstones, um, but I also like geometry and, and shapes and sort of how they, how they interact with each other. Mm. Um, so the inspiration actually behind this was um, the course of a day, so I've got morning, noon, and night. Oh, okay, um, I love that. So yeah. I've got the gemstones to represent that, and the diamonds are like the, the course of the sun, so it's in, low in the sky in the morning, reaches its zenith, and then. Oh, beautiful! So you've got three 
Tourmalines are they? So I've got two tourmalines. So I've got two a blue tourmalines. and a pink tourmaline. And I've also got this lovely blue um, aquamarine. This has got quite a deep colour. Oh, it has, it. yeah. It doesn't look like an aquamarine because it's so mm. deep, but it's beautiful. Well, and then you've got three diamonds. I do, yes. Why not? Why not? I love the sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, does the green represent the morning? Mm -hmm. And then... So morning, noon and evening. Oh, wonderful. So. Brilliant. So you're going to set those all into your pendant. Absolutely. And you've got a bit less than five hours now. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll be able to fit it all in the time today? I should do. I should do. Fingers I'm crossed. hoping that the stone setting normally would take me, say, three hours. Mm. So... Um, given that I think everything just takes a little bit longer, especially when you're not in your own studio. It's like being not in your own kitchen. You yeah, know, not yeah. Not quite sure where everything is. Yeah, um, yeah, so absolutely. Fingers crossed. Well, it looks like a beautiful piece. And yeah, can't wait to see it unfold. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Hi there, Tressa. Hey, Jess. How's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you feeling today? Positive. I'm going to finish this one. It's going to, yeah. Brilliant. Well, you did very well before, so I have no doubt that this will be no different. Um, but you're making something very interesting today. Please tell us all about it. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit different. So, with doing the diploma, it's made me think a lot more about my signature style. And because I'm a shoulder surgeon, I, I used to always try and keep the jewellery in my work separate. And I thought, well, they're both part of me. Mm. So um, I've made this shape, which is a very abstract shoulder blade. Um, and so I've made it out of polymer clay. Wow, that's very cool. Yep, and love then it. It was quite chunky, so I then got it cast in wax to thin it out and then thinned out the wax. Then got that 3D scanned and shrunk down and ended up with, with this. Oh, beautiful. So this is a silver cast yep. abstract shoulder blade. Very abstract. Yes, but I can see, I mean, I don't know that much about shoulder blades, but I can see... You know the yeah the from. essence of it, and it's so beautiful. It's so like smooth and curved, and yeah, it definitely feels like it's a part of nature. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Okay, so you've got this cast in advance. Yes. So what are you making so today? My plan today is to parve set that area here with some synthetic oh, sapphires. Yeah, so see if all the stuff I learnt in Scott's course actually. <laughs> We'll pay yes, off. Out, yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know what parve setting mm. is, can you explain so briefly? Parve means pavement, and um, so it's where you put lots of little stones in. And the type of parve I'm doing is I call cluster parve or fantasy parve because it's an irregular shape mm. and the stones are all different sizes. Yeah. So that'll add to the challenge because I've got to fit all the stones in, but also have enough metal around them to be able to push it to, to make claws and push them over yeah so absolutely that's going to be the big challenge yeah because in your advanced diploma you did straight line parve yes I did this one yes so. which is beautiful thank you very very neat so now you're stepping it up and going for a cluster kind of random exactly because obviously this wasn't hard enough I thought no I'd you thought you'd challenge worse. yourself even more and this is yeah. your design layout is it over yeah. here so I've just drawn out um the different shapes, the, well, sorry, the different sizes, sizes and yeah. then I've made these out of old um, graining tools oh. so they match the sizes of the stones oh, and the colours that I've drawn them so that I can then push those shapes in and you'll end up with little circles on the metal. Yeah. So I can then drill in those places rather than having to keep double checking. Amazing. It's a very crossed. technical piece. So it's a stone setting day for you today. Yes, it's all stone setting. Yes. Yeah, no soldering, nothing, just this. And but. it's just a beautiful thing. And I have one more question mm. while we're here. You have this very cool setup on your bench with all these gravers. Can you just tell me a little bit about them? Because I think people will be very interested to, to see what's, what's involved in all of this. Sure. So, so these ones are flat gravers. These aren't actually gravers, they're just little pushers and those are claw sp splitters. So like the, the micro claw that Kate was doing yesterday, so mm. that you can just split the grains before you push them over. Yeah. Those ones are spit sticks in different sizes. They're very and some sharp. Of them very sharp. And yeah. Some of them are designed for doing straight lines and some are designed for doing curves. Mm. And the ones with the little cutouts in them, they're for doing really sharp curves. Um, and then these are more gravers, but these three are carbide gravers. And so with carbide, it's really sharp and it gives a lovely shiny finish. Mm. Um, 
but they're really brittle, so if you try and hand push them, you're likely to break them, or well, certainly I am. Right. So these are high speed steel gravers, so that I can put them in this handle and do the kind of fine tuning by hand. Yeah, and you so. use the special, you use a mixture of hand graving and also the machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on. There is a lot going yeah, on. Yeah. So um, with hand graving, it takes about three years to be really good at um, pavé setting. Mm. Whereas with power assisted setting, allegedly you can get it down to three months. The plan is it should be a bit quicker. But with power assisted, sometimes the grains are really small. And so we don't know if they're going to be as secure as the old fashioned. So I tend to do a little mixture of both. So. I have the grains a bit bigger, but I pre-cut them all out, and then I push them over by hand to just give that little bit of extra security. Brilliant. So it will work out. Well, it sounds like you have your hands full today, Definitely. but I can't wait to see your setting unfold, and we'll be catching up with you throughout the day. So, uh, good luck. Thanks, Jess. Yes, I'll see you in a bit. Hi there, Kath. Hi, Jess. How are you doing today? Thank you. Oh, what are we working on? Something fiddly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we'll just <laughs> some, put that there for some a minute. Some stone. Stone <laughs> yeah, setting again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You've not practice. had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So today is your signature style day. Yes. Um, tell me a bit about your style and what we're working on today. Um, well, I I like mixed metals. I uh, like um, sort of granulation and uh, sort of rivet type effect mm. and things. Um, and I think I, I like stories and how you know how things come how you know design yeah. make things come about. You like people. I like people. I feel like your yes. jewelry is often about yes. people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, these one, my my one of my best friends, Carly. Mm -hmm. um, she's got. a great family and um, I was thinking about them and um, what it is about their characters that is sort of strong to me um, just sort of what they like their hobbies and stuff so yeah so this um, is like a storytelling piece. yes it is yeah. yes so yeah. um, lovely so like Carly likes to party and she loves um, cocktails and um, dancing and everything so I nice she it. sounds fun <laughs> yeah. she, is, she is so that's kind of like a cocktail glass idea sort of inspired by mm. and um, her husband Sam is into cycling and like originally I thought a wheel and I thought no that'd be too so um, that's kind of like a bike chain piece mm. so, you know one of the so this is a pair of elements. earrings that you're making pair of earrings, sorry, to yes. tell the story yes. of the family yes, and, and you've got different kind of charms or elements that represent yes. each member yeah. brilliant Great. So this side you've got your cocktail, and is that a stone setting under there, or? Yes, that is a yes. stone setting. So this is this is a skateboard for one ah, of the teenage nice. daughters, Margot. Lovely. Um, so she's really into skating, and um, and then that's her. The other daughter is called Ruby, mm -hmm. and that's okay. a paintbrush. She's just done a, a art foundation. So the stone setting is for Ruby because we've got Ruby, and Margot's middle name is Pearl. So. I've got a pearl for this side. Um, yeah, so and they're hoops, gold and silver. Oh, okay, they're and hoop ones. Yes, Brilliant. There's a lot going on. It's really cool. And these are all the family members. Yes, so I, you know, to bring out the story of them, I, I just sort of got these photos and then <laughs> just sort of thought about each member and which, you know, what's their, what's their thing. Yeah, and there's a doggy. The dog is called Bones and the hoops are made from the shape of a bone. I see, very <laughs> clever, very clever. So, yeah, they're gonna be asymmetric, oxidized um, with, the, with the gold balls. Well, That's I think the they are gonna absolutely love these earrings. They sound very special. There's a lot going on. Do you think you'll get it done in the five hours today? I will do. I mean, there is a, if, if there's time, which I'm kind of thinking there probably isn't, <laughs> um, I would like to put their birthstones on as well, but that, See how you I'm get on. I'm kind of really on the fence as to whether that will add. Or anyway. if it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, there's a lot going on. The shapes and the earrings, I think, they say enough. Mm. It's not necessary. Yes. But it would be quite a sweet addition. Yeah. If we had Sometimes time, until you've made it, you can't really tell. You really and can't. You'll see yeah. as it goes on. Absolutely. But it sounds brilliant, and I'm very excited to see it come together. Thank so, you. So uh, I'll let you keep going. Thank you very much. Great. Today the 
students will be guided by mentor Barbara Yard. Barbara is a trained goldsmith and passionate jewellery tutor. She honed her skills by studying jewellery and silversmithing at Sir John Cass University and now hand makes jewellery for clients from her workshop in London while also teaching on the diploma programme at Jewellers Academy and filming courses with us. As a trained jeweller, her attention to precision and detail is reflected in her work. She uses a variety of techniques combining precious metals with traditional processes such as wax carving, kmbu, reticulation and working with gold. Today the students are focused on their signature style. It can take many years for a new jeweller to really grasp their favourite styles and techniques to work in. Our mentor for today, Barbara, loves to work with gold. Gold is similar to silver to work with, so many students master techniques in silver before moving on to the more expensive gold options. However, there are some differences in working with gold, which are important for fine jewellers to know about. Let's have a look at how Barbara works with gold. When I'm working with gold and I want to solder my ring shank to an element, this is what I will normally do. I need to make sure that my heat doesn't touch my solder seam because I don't want my ring shank to split. So I would normally use yellow ochre and this is yellow ochre water-based paint. Just put some on on all the sides. And this is a heat blocker. So yellow ochre is really good for anywhere that you don't want your heat to touch. Other things you can use are Tipex. You can also use Jewelers Rouge. So I don't want this anywhere out because I don't want, I want the heat to flow. So I do need to make sure I'm really neat with my yellow ochre on where I'm putting it. So now I've got my yellow ochre and, I'm go and I've filed a flat top on my curved surface and I filed a flat bottom on my shank here. I'm going to use my third arm and put everything together. Before I do that, I mustn't forget to put some borax. I'm using my borax dish and borax cone. You can use your liquid if you like. I'm using my third hand. I just want to make sure it's all in place. I've now put my ring together, so I've got my yellow ochre at the top where my solder seam is. I've got my borax, and now I'm just going to put a pillion of solder on either side. I like to use pillions, but I know some people like to bead their solder, so that either method works really, really well. I'm using nine karat gold hard solder. You can also use easy solder for this. So if you've done your shank in hard solder, you can then move down to easy solder if you want. But I personally like to use hard solder throughout. I just find, I, I just prefer that, that's my choice. Now, I'm going to heat my whole ring up and I'm going to solder my shank to my element. And when you're working with nine karat gold, it is slightly harder to work with than silver. So you have to heat your piece really really well make sure remember that your solder doesn't jump and if it does don't worry just wet and reposition so with silver don't forget you have to heat up the whole piece it just makes it a bit more easier but with this if you notice my gold I'm going to heat the whole piece and then I'm going to really focus on my element and the shank part at the bottom so as I'm heating up, you're going to see my gold. It's going to change into a red colour. I've moved up to a bigger torch because the torch I was using actually was a fine torch, which is really good for tiny elements. But just something like this where I've got a larger surface area to work with, the bigger torch will help me heat my piece much quicker. So I'm checking my other side as well, making sure everything has soldered. As soon as it solders, you take it away. So gold is a lovely material to work with, but the only difference is when I'm heating it, I heat the whole piece, then I really do try and focus on the element and the shank that I'm working with, which will be there. 
and if you can see the yellow ochre has dried but as soon as you decide to put that in water to cool it off that will disappear because it's a water-based paint it'll leave no residue at all hi kate how's it going um yeah okay i think i'm close to being ready to stay and set but mm -hmm. i'm just wondering how much polishing do you, do you recommend doing before I start stone setting? Polish the whole thing, clean the whole thing up, mm -hmm. make, it, make sure it's perfect. If you need to put it in a polishing barrel, do that. If you need to use your polishing mops, do that. Stone setting is the last thing that you're going to be doing. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. And that's beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. And I think much. the stones you have are lovely. Thank you. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Seeing it finished today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I've got my fingers crossed yes. that you will. Yep, same here. Good. Thank you. Hello, Kath. Hiya. How are things going with you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, I did actually want to ask you, mm -hmm. so I'm going to oxidise these yeah. pieces. And um, I mean, I was thinking about frosting. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. But how does that look oxidised? Have you done that before? Have you seen that happen? So frosting, the colour, you're not going to really see the frosting because frosting works well on a plain metal. So either if it's gold or silver. Mm -hmm. But if you oxidise it and you frosted it, you can just get some wire wool and just take down the frosting okay. a little bit to kind of highlight those areas where you have done that texture on there. Right, okay. Um, and if I chose not to, because I'm still, you know, mm -hmm. going to see how it goes, um, how much polishing do you do? you bother polishing or do you just do a nice... Polish your piece up, but then you need to degrease it. So either some white spirit, methylated spirits, okay. or a bit of washing up liquid and um, a bit of water so do your piece degrease so that when you do put it in the oxidizing solution there's nothing there to inhibit okay. the oxidization taken to the metal and um, so if i just did a sort of a, a sanding that would that, that would be fine yeah so if you just did a sanded one you buffed it up a little bit again don't forget to degrease and then just put that on and most people will sometimes with oxidization use a little bit of wire wool or emery paper and just highlight little areas maybe yeah. take the edges down slightly buff in the middle slightly just to bring up certain areas of the oxidization yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good luck. And Thank I love you. your little cocktail glass you've done there. <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> Hello, Tressa. Oh, hi, That's lovely. looking lovely. Thank you. I like getting there slowly, I think. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, with parve or with thread and grain, how much space do you normally leave on either side? I'd say 0.5 millimetres mm -hmm. is the minimum that you should leave. Anything less, it just makes it harder to push the grains over your gemstones there. But it looks like you've got enough metal. That's looking good. So there we go. Yes. Yeah, a bit better. I'm actually polishing. Oh my gosh. I know, I know. I've got to the polishing stage. I forgot what polishing is on this trip. I, so I thought I'd actually try and get a decent mirror polish because I do love, love a nice shiny mirror. And it goes with your style. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's all, all looking like it's actually decent. Really. Um, Hello. Hi. There we go. So we did it right. Like, I've just heard you've had your jaw bit break off. Yes. So let's see. Where did it break? So it's in one hole has gone through and it's the other hole. It's in this one. Can you actually feel it? 
thing is, it's not really sticking out at all. So I don't know how we're going to get that. The only thing I'm thinking is, because what I was going to do is pierce, use the two holes as a sort of starting point for piercing, mm -hmm. just pierce down to that hole. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. That's just one of those hazards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Many jewellers sell their work online these days, but face-to-face -face sales are far from over. Student and jeweller Kath Dare sells her work at regular weekly markets in South London, as well as in local galleries and online too. Let's hear a little about her journey as a jewellery maker. My name is Kath, my company is Kath Dare Jewellery and I hand make bohemian, relaxed, organic pieces, um, sometimes highlighted with precious and semi-precious stones. I sell my jewellery at markets. I really enjoy that contact with um, my market friends. Even just a complimentary comment on my jewellery can lift my spirits. The thing I love most about people buying my jewellery is I feel it's an honour that they've chosen something that I've made from, you know, in my studio. I started my jewellery business quite organically. I had handmade my wedding dress and I was going to the bead shops a lot and I started to buy beads and make some pieces. People were commenting, making nice comments, so I started to sell them. And I wanted more knowledge, so I went to local colleges learnt soldering and, and it just went from there really. My biggest struggle is I'm very disorganised and I try so hard to plan my time and hit deadlines, which I do hit the deadlines, but with a lot of crashing about in the meantime. <laughs> so um, that has been my biggest struggle. Also, pricing correctly, I find quite a struggle. I would say my advice for starting a market stall or selling anywhere face to face is to try not to get distracted by what others are doing because invariably there will be other jewellery there. And you just need to keep focused, stay in your lane, do what you do and it takes time, it's not going to be immediate. The Diploma in Advanced Jewellery has been amazing. Meeting the other jewellers and seeing what they have done has been a real joy. The community that, that's come from it and the encouragement. Technically, just it's the little things you pick up that even on this process I've used techniques I didn't know existed. The mentors have been really great to learn from and I've really enjoyed it. Okay, jewellers, it's that time again. This is the midway point in your making time. So you've had two and a half hours, two and a half left. It sounds like a long time, but we know it goes quickly. So have a think about your projects and what you need to do in the next two and a half hours. You're doing an amazing job, keep going. But just a little reminder, midway point is here. Hi, Kath, how's it going? Not too bad, I've got soldered everywhere. Let's have a look. I'm just trying to reduce that a bit. You don't want to thin out your metal too much because I can see that it's in areas there where your beading is so you don't want to thin that out too much on there. If you're going with a safety back file maybe because the rest of it is fine. Yeah. Okay. It's just those areas there and even if you are going in with oxidization the oxidization will just highlight those dented areas, which I take it you don't want to do, do you? No. Yeah. So keep it as, get it as smooth as possible. Thank you. So that's looking good there. Thank you. Because this one is great. 
That's a really lovely finish on that one. Thank you. Right, so my piece is now ready for me to start setting the stones. I've cut the seats and I'm happy with those. Um, in order to set the stones, I need, it, I need the work to be held really securely. So I'm going to use something called Thermolock, which is a thermoplastic. Um, you put it into hot water, as I've just done, and over, in the next couple of minutes it will go quite soft so that I can mould it um, around my work. And then I can also mould it so there's a little piece for it to clamp on. And I'll pop it into the vise. Um, I've just got to wait for a few minutes so sort of somewhere between two and five minutes and keep prodding it every so often right so uh, the thermolock has now um, softened in the water and slightly hot fingers but what I'm going to do is mold it so that my first of all I can clamp it and then put my piece in it and I've got to do this reasonably quickly so that um, it doesn't harden before I've actually had the chance to set my piece in. Now, the tricky thing is, I want to make sure that it's in, but I don't want it to be over the top of the stone settings too much, so I've got to make sure it's lower than those, but whilst actually holding my work. There we go. So we can go to Kate. Yeah, just hope that um, it's held securely enough, because otherwise it's going to take another few minutes to <laughs> reboil the kettle, remelt it, well, yes. re-soften it. Um, which obviously normally isn't a problem, but today is time we don't really have. Agreed. Yes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So now are you ready to set? Will be, just as soon as it's hardened. So I've got to wait now for a little bit just for it to make sure that it's actually holding the work properly. Otherwise it'll all be moving and that's no good. Yeah. Brilliant. Tressa, that parvo setting looks beautiful. Are you pleased? Yeah, I was really worried about getting it done in time, but everything's set, so I'm just trying to clean up the flashings around yeah. the grains. Do you mind having a look? Because, you know, when you've been staring at something for so long, oh, you just yes, can't see anymore. I know that. You go anymore. kind of a bit. Yeah, you got it. Oh, it's looking lovely. A little bit more cleaning up. Especially that one with the four together, isn't it? Needs yes, that's chewy. the one. Because I think you've got a couple in the middle. You've used three beads. Yeah. And the other one's a bit homeopathic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know what to do with yes. it now because it's kind of there. I think it, next time I, I would have just, you could have maybe put another little tiny stone in that bit there and got rid of one of those beads. But other than that, that's lovely. Really, really nice. Thank you. Cool. And in terms of polishing, I was going to just do the equivalent of rouge, so I don't kind of lose yes. too much detail. Yeah, I would just do an, a, just a little quick flash polish, yeah. and then you can put it in the ultrasonic machine. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Barbara. So, yes, yeah, so just that bit there. Yes, yeah, so it was just that bit there. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay, how's that setting going? Yeah, it seems to be okay at the moment. I'm doing this central one first because I just thought it's, it's the trickiest if one. the to... trickiest one, then do the ones on the outside. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so I've now trimmed down the extra sort of, cl well, claws, tabs that are going to come over. Yeah. I'm just checking to make sure I've got it all right. And then nice. I'll be pushing yeah. those over. Pushing those over. Now you're going to file those tabs so you get a nice... Like 45 degree angle going there. Yes, as best I can. This one's really tricky to get to. Yes, that's the one on the inside, isn't mm. it? You could actually, I was going to say, if you have a safety back file, it's flat on the mm -hmm. top, flat on the sides and teeth one side. Yeah. And it's just easier to get in. I wouldn't hear because I don't want to damage any of your metal mm. on the other sides. Yeah. So... You should, you should be able to get it. It might be that you can just do the sides and that little bit at the back mm. may have to leave Yeah. Okay. just poking out slightly. We'll see how it goes. goes. I think maybe when I push it over with the pusher, it might it, Yeah, it might all push at the same time because you've got quite a wide pusher there. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much the same. Yeah, well, slightly, slightly bit of that. You can make your own pusher, remember, mm. using a couple of nails or something. But most setters will do that when they're setting a piece because every piece is going to be different mm. and they'll make their own pusher just to sit, to kind of make it work. 
but I think this is going to look great. Those tabs are looking really, really good. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Hiya, Gap. Hiya. Looking good. Oh, tiny bit of piercing. Yes. <laughs> What's that for? That's for um, making granules. The no, oh. no, that's the. I really like tube. Like so mini jump rings. Yes, but I like the flatness mm. of them, the aesthetic that gives us. Yeah. I mean, you can get it from a jump ring. Um, if you hammer it, yeah, but that, that is nice. nice top. But I just feel, yeah, I think that's um, it's very neat, isn't it, for earrings as well, and for me, and for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm tend, I tend to be, yeah, brilliant. And this piece is really about family, isn't it? Yes. And uh, you've got four, all adults now. Yeah. yeah, all grown up. You've all done up. your work is yes. done. Yes, probably well, not. Probably yes. not. <laughs> yes. And what do they think of your jewelry making? They're really supportive, actually, and um, they all wear it. They all come and find me and ask me for different bits and bobs to be made. I've just made my son a really lovely ring for his 25th birthday. Oh, amazing! That was like a man's cocktail ring. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think I'd, I would actually love to have enough time to sort of really go into male jewellery. I think men are getting more, well, they're getting braver. I mm, think, yeah, with being wear. creative and like sharing. my son's ring, he wanted a really big red faceted stone surrounded yeah. by leaves. And I was really quite surprised, mm. and, um, but brilliant, you know. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and, and um, I bet he was so happy that you had made it as well. Yeah, it's quite very, special. He's very proud. Even just recently, I feel that more men are coming to me with commissions. I'm just doing a really nice big chunky bangle for yeah. a man at the moment. And yeah, no, it's definitely an area we'd like to explore at some point. Nice, yeah, yeah. Well, you've I mean, got the inspiration at yes, home. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> you've got four to five models who can test it all yeah, out for absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cool, well, we could chat all day, but I will let yes, you keep going. You. But uh, yeah, it's looking awesome, really coming together. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> What colour is it? It's green. I did. So, there's, so it's a baguette shape? Yeah, it's like this. So there's that's the aquamarine, there's the pink, and then there's a green one, the same shape. Where do you think you might have lost it? Did it, it go on that side? I'm not sure. It was on my plate, and then I think I knocked it with my hand. Don't so worry, we will find it. We'll it. find it, don't it's worry. It's got to be here. Don't worry. It's not a small, tiny, yeah. tiny no, one, no. so we're definitely going to find it. Yeah, Just and it's green, so we'll see okay. it on the floor. What about under the foot pedal? Oh, no. I did look under there. No, nothing. On your no. chair? The station leads back in. Maybe. Hold on, wait, what's that? What colour is it? It's green. green. It's here. Oh. It's here, it's in the tray. Oh, oh the tray. Really? here it is. Oh, oh my thank goodness. goodness. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh. It's all right. to the rescue. <laughs> well done, Kat. Oh. Thank you. That was all you needed, wasn't I it? I know, it's just, I think I'm a bit, bit late. I really, really want to have one finish this time. Yes, Especially you will, you will. Don't worry, we've got your back. So, yeah. you've got them, have you got your diamonds? Yes, they're in the bag. In fact, okay. I'm going to put them in the bag and then I can't knock them off again. Yes, three. Probably fine. Maybe pop them back a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. you've got your tray, which you Absolutely. It. That's what it's for. Oh, thank you so thank much, you everyone. everyone. <laughs> Jess, I'm going to Oh, wow. Let's have a look. Oh, beautiful. Look at them. No gaps. Yeah. Perfection. No gaps, not too wonky. Just need to keep them in and not mm. rip my grains off. And now you just put super glue over all of it. That's a great idea. <laughs> super glue it, give it up to high polish, like some <laughs> resin, and we're done. <laughs> yeah, not quite, not no. quite. So what is next? Is it so raising? So next is to push over the, the grains that are there, yeah, so kind of, they're, they're already raised because it's what's right. left. Yeah. So push them over and then bead them. Nice. 
and then yeah, and not lose any. Don't lose any. We we'll won't keep be losing any. Today. Okay. Hopefully. Well, they look amazing. I love the pattern. That is going to look incredible when it's done. Mm, we'll awesome. Cool. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. As our jewellers are advanced level students and the work they create is at the higher end of the market, let's take a look at how this jewellery is priced and why it is so crucial that the jewellers get this bit right in order to grow a thriving business. So Jess, how do the jewellers price their high end fine jewellery? Mm, great question. I think one of the most important things when you're pricing higher end work is to be really bold and brave with it. So often jewellers will feel nervous about putting their prices up or charging a lot more for something that's in the higher end bracket. But remember that some people really want fine jewellery and they're happy to pay the higher end bracket. So I think there's a little bit of overcoming that fear and that imposter syndrome that happens at the beginning and sometimes there's a bit of incremental changes in your pricing. But then in terms of the practicals, we do price it a little bit differently as well. So if we're working with, say, silver and kind of lower end jewellery, I suppose, uh, we'll normally do a markup of our materials of two to three times in our pricing formula. We'll have other things in there as well. Um, whereas when it comes to working with gold, uh, diamonds, kind of higher end, precious stones, the markup will go down. So for example, if we have a thousand pounds worth of gold, we're not going to charge two or three thousand pounds for that. But we might charge sort of a markup of 1.5 or even when it goes much higher, sort of 1.2. So there are some technical differences as well, which are useful to know about. But I think the key is most jewelers don't charge enough. So it's just building that confidence, trusting that if you put it out there, if it's work that you love, if you've got the materials to back it up and you price it correctly, um, your customers will come. I think that's so true because we, we're not competing with the high street. There's no point in trying to, to do something like that, that that's mass manufactured. It's, they're just very different kinds of, of pieces, really. So it's not really worth looking, looking to that for our pricing. Um, and I think what's really great is for, for fine jewellers is, is developing a signature style, something that is very identifiably you, um, that really is going to attract the ideal customer. And when the ideal customer comes, that's when we start to have a really enjoyable, profitable jewellery business. Okay, jewellers, so we have one hour left. These are your final 60 minutes of making time. Keep going. This is the final hour. I'm doing you right. Yeah, yeah. It, I would have liked it a bit longer, but I think it should be all right. So, Tressa, the jewellers this week have given you the nickname the Tool Queen because you have so many awesome tools. And one of them is this amazing torch. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about it? Sure. So this is a Smith's Little Torch. So the, the, the torches we normally use are butane torches. So they have a single fuel and then they get the oxygen from the air. Mm. But with these, they're called dual fuel torches because the red one is for the gas, which is... In the UK, it's usually propane, but they also work with acetylene, which is what the US tends to use more of. Mm. And then the green one's for the oxygen. And the oxygen, you can either get cylinders of oxygen, or it's much safer to have an oxygen concentrator. So my oxygen concentrator is one I got from eBay, which is the next medical one, and it works fine. So um, in, order to, in order to use it, you start by opening up the gas. Yeah. And then you turn the little red. Turn the little red one till you get a flame and the flame will be yellow because there isn't a lot of oxygen at the moment it's just getting the oxygen to burn from the atmosphere yeah. the reason that's beeping is because I've got the oxygen off here right. and because it's a medical oxycon it thinks I'm not breathing anymore so right. it's worried about me it's important. Yeah. exactly <laughs> so as you start putting the oxygen on you'll see it goes more blue so the flame becomes hotter yeah which is important for jewelry making exactly and so you can get a nice fine hot flame for doing precision soldering or um, you know when you kind of do uh, heat rivets and you make a bald rivet at the end of things so you can even do that with a gemstone in because it's really hot but it's really concentrated very precise yeah so yeah. it's really useful um, and then to turn it off you always turn the oxygen off first and then turn the gas off otherwise you get a pop 
Right, gotcha. Cool. Interesting, and it's got a little magnetic yeah, stand. Yeah, it's got a little magnetic stand and it's got different sized um, uh, tips, tips to use. Yeah. yeah, wonderful, great. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing about right. it with us. Okay, Jewelers, these are your final 15 minutes of making time. So just 15 minutes left. Any final bits of polishing, finishing, last little stretch, you can do this. Amazing. Let's have a look. Wow, that is stunning. Thank you. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I think I'm on yeah. Santa Kate. I don't think I could have done any better at home because I mean that's kind of where my pave's at. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Oh, it's, it's glorious. Just, Such a beautiful piece. I love the little highlights as well where you've shined it up and the satin, nice chain. Finished early. Yeah. Ten Yesterday, minutes to spare. Huge relief. <laughs> oh, well done. Cool, you can get helping the others now. <laughs> Okay, jewelers, that is the end of making time. Put your tools down. Your time is up. You've done all that you can. Massive well done today. You have made it to the end. And if you could put your pieces onto the mentors table, we can't wait to see them. So Barbara, the jewellers have finished for the day. How do you think they've done today? I think they've all done brilliantly in the time they've had. These are three fantastic pieces. Mm, all so different, aren't they? They are, exactly. This one, I just think the design is striking. Mm. It's wonderful. I think the setting on this is great, but I just think this has just got such a boho look and feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to talk through each one one by one because love to get your feedback for the students and also anything they could work on or improve on next time. So if we start with Kath's over here, she has his incredible storytell earrings. Tell us what you thought of this and, you know, pros, cons, things that she could think about. I think the pros for this are that they're very wearable. I think the gold and the pearl, they're two completely different pieces, mm. but they work well together, which I just think is lovely. A top tip for her would be next time she's oxidising, make sure her piece is completely clean. Yes, I think she ran out of time. She did, and yeah. she did have a little panic. 
but make sure when you're oxidizing your pieces are completely clean completely grease free mm, that would have and got more of a, a you, finish you, you get more of a full coverage mm, on there yeah. and it's basically two pairs of earrings in one so you can take this off have a hoop or mm. you can wear it as one long earring. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. And she was saying you can take the different elements apart um, so they're quite interchangeable. Changeable. So that's great. Yeah. So you could have it so it's a nice short earring like that or you can have it as a long earring. Mm. I just think it's day and night. Yeah. It's great. Brilliant design. Mm. Awesome. Okay, great. And then moving on to uh, Kate's. So Kate really focused on stone setting for this one. What feedback would you give Kate? I think Kate's um, settings are absolutely stunning. I just think she's worked so hard on those. Mm. They look really beautiful. Only tip I would say to her, when she's doing the tabs on her rectangular stone, make sure she's filed those so they're coming at a 45 degree angle. They're not so straight because you need those tabs to be held in. Mm. And just be careful when you're doing your settings for your round stones, when it's all so close together, this at that point where you would start making your own pushes. Get a nail, get an old um, drill bit, chop the top off and start making your own pushes. That means every time you make a setting, you can make a pusher that will suit that setting. But other than that, I think this is absolutely lovely. Yes. The stones really complement each other, don't they? They do. And her idea behind the concept was like uh, morning, noon and night. Yeah. So the sun rising and, and falling, which I think is really good. And lovely. I just She's think really the, 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 the diamonds just really make it all, just pop. give it that extra pop. Mm. Yes, exactly. Brilliant. And last but not least, we have Tressa's stunning piece. Um, yes. Yeah, tell us your, your thoughts on this one. I think the shape of this is absolutely stunning. I think it's a brilliantly curved shape. It's just so fluid mm. and it's just a real nice flow. It's got a lovely weight to it as well. This is a collection, just weight. This is a collection that can <laughs> run and run happen. and run and run. <laughs> yeah. It's a collection that you would have in your stock forever and ever. Mm. I think her parve setting is beautiful. Top tip for her parve, I would have used maybe tinier stones. So I would have used bigger stones at the top then worked my way down to tinier stones just because she's got a few gaps there that mm. she could have been filled mm. instead of pushed up with your metal. Yeah. But other yeah. than that, I just think it, it's, it's great. And it's a really easy piece to wear. Mm. Wonderful. And all of the jewellers finished their pieces in the time. They did. Which is Everybody finished, incredible. which I think was a great yeah. intrusion. I know they wanted Cheap more time like. to do more because they're perfectionists, like all of us. But, but I think as a jeweller, we always want more time. Yes. The time we're given is never enough. <laughs> Wonderful. So you have some little awards to give I the jewellers. I do, jewelers. indeed. Let's see what you've got for them. So my first award would be to Kath. Yes. And yes. I would definitely wear that just because it's basically three pairs of earrings in one. Yeah. And you love the great. style, don't And I you? love this style. I just think yeah. it's absolutely great. Which that be, ruby is brilliant. Yeah, and it'll be amazing for her to hear because I know she wasn't that pleased with She these. wasn't. When yeah. she was doing that, I thought, I really, really like those. Yeah. I would kind of snap those up in a heartbeat. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, next up? This, I think, is the most commercial piece. Mm. Again, this is a necklace that you could wear. Any, I think this is a generational thing as well. Yeah. Somebody who's young could wear this, somebody who's a bit older. Mm -hmm. Earrings you could make out of this, ring. Actually, a bracelet would be brilliant. Yes. Could you imagine that? Oh. A bracelet all yes, the way along. with movement. With movement on there. <laughs> oh, that would be... <laughs> Love to see yeah, that. Could, yeah. That could go forever and ever. Yeah, yeah. And this one, I think technically mm. it's just lovely. Yeah. How she's made the actual smooth shape how she's done all the parve setting. It's just a, a really lovely, lovely piece. The texture on it as well, I think goes really, really well with her setting. Yes, yeah, we're very proud of them. We are, they've done absolutely <laughs> brilliantly and they should all be proud of themselves. Yeah, wonderful. Well, Barbara, thank you so much for being here. I know My the pleasure. jewelers appreciated having you. It's been awesome. Thank you, I had a really, really good time.
As it is the final day of the Jewellers Retreat, we have some awards to give the Jewellers to say a massive congratulations and well done on their hard work in getting through an intense three days. So, first up we have the lovely Kate. Welcome Kate. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You've done so well. Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. And next we have Kath. Come here, Kath. Thank you so much. Oh, I know it was stressful, but you did it. <laughs> and last but not least, lovely Tressa. Yay! Our tall queen. <laughs> there we go. We need another award for you for tall queen. The tall queen award. Yeah, next time. And Anna is here to congratulate you all as well. I'm glad everyone that has said such a brilliant Thank week. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It'll be, The studio will be quiet without you now. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be a little space. There will be a little bit more space, yeah, yeah. But you have to come back sometime. Oh, amazing. Yes. <laughs> That brings us to the end of day three. I hope you've enjoyed watching these jewellers go through this process as much as we have enjoyed putting it together for you. If you haven't already, be sure to go and connect with them on social media. For now, we're gonna have a bit of playtime after all that hard work. Until next time, from me and all of the jewellers, happy Hi. making.